Hello and welcome to Getting APIs to Work. Today we say hello to Ben Hutton, Specification Lead of Jason Schema. Hey Ben, how are you doing? Hey, good morning. Um, yeah, I'm alright, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks a lot. So I asked Ben to join because Ben is working at the Jason Schema Specification Lead. He's doing that work for Postman. And I wanted to talk a little bit about JSON Schema, why it matters for APIs, and why it's interesting to know a little bit about what JSON Schema does. We will have a more detailed JSON Schema video coming up. Today, we just talk about why it matters. So Ben, why does JSON Schema matter for API folks? I think JSON Schema matters the most because it's a good enough solution for validation, um, for validating you know, JSON data. Um, JSON is, is used in many APIs. It's, it's very ubiquitous, um, and it's you know, good enough compared to other similar across the wire protocols. Um, and JSON schema gives that validation, um, and it has simple bits and complicated bits, and, and a lot of people use just the, the simple bits, and that's good enough. And when you want to use more complicated validation uh, rules, you can use those more advanced bits. But I think the real key in, in terms of why it matters and why it's so popular is is the interoperability. Um, I've seen many similar specifications that attempt to do validation, but they tend to stick to one specific programming language, um, or they claim to be interoperable, but don't provide a test suite which can be used across programming languages. So I think that's the, the key strength of um, JSON Schema and why JSON Schema really matters is the interoperability um, across programming languages. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, generally speaking, that's one of the advantages of using standards and standardized languages for anything, right? That then you get tooling in a variety of environments that, that you're using. The part about validation, I think, is really interesting. So one of the things that I like to say is that APIs are, are languages, right? They define how two parties communicate with each other. And in that case, you could think of JSON schema as something that allows you to at least enforce some constraints around those languages that you can say, hey, that's not something that you're allowed to ask or that you're allowed to respond with or these kind of things. Where exactly does JSON schema slot in, let's say, in the ecosystem of API specifications that most developers nowadays work with? Yeah, I mean, a, um, JSON schema is part of the OpenA API specification, or it's used within the Open API specification and the Async API specification. Um, with Open API 3.1, it now fully supports JSON schema. Um, previously, it was a slightly modified version, uh, which was some problems, but you know, we hope we resolve those now moving forward. Um, but where it really works in terms of you know the, the specification when you're defining your APIs. When you when you don't write it in code first, and you and you design the API first, um, you iron out um, ambiguities, particularly with with payload definitions. Um, I've worked on projects where people you know say say words or you know write down. They even specify you know, in plain English what they intend for the the payloads to look like. Um, but when it comes to defining the specification um, in terms of a, a schema and JSON schema. Um, they nail down those specifics, those ambiguities, which might happen when reading plain English. Um, and particularly if you're dealing with sensitive data like health data or financial data, those um, ambiguities, nailing them down to specifics uh, that's, that's you know, validatable by a computer as opposed to just a human, um, become a lot more important. Uh -huh. I'm wondering if you see, when you see uh, JSON schema being used for APIs throughout their life cycle, would you typically see that throughout the API life cycle that the JSON schema gets down, gets kind of narrowed down a lot? Is that something that people do a lot where they start with a very loose schema and then they keep making it more specific to kind of, you know, uh, cover edge cases and these kind of things? Or typically, is it something where they write a schema and, and then that schema kind of stays the same throughout the, the life of the API? I think it's it's both, and it really depends what the situation is. Um, I think a lot of the time, we don't see many of the schemas used uh, because they're you know, hidden 
hidden behind um, API gateways um, and they're not exposed to the API consumers or they're used for private APIs, which we're not going to see in public. Um, a lot of the APIs which are openly available or the schema repositories which are openly available, um, yeah, it really does depend on the situation. So um, if there are very um, specific constraints, um, such as health data or, or genetic data, then um, you find that it, it depends how the evolution is planned. So I think with with schemas and APIs, you have to sort of map out your evolution. Do you want to have fixed APIs for a long time, which are inflexible or specific, or do you want to allow easily extending those APIs, those mm -hmm. uh, payload definitions? Uh, and that's yeah something you really have to consider. But we see both, and both work really well. Uh, I mean, if you consider uh, some of the Google APIs, they were um, version 1.1 has, has been very, very long lived. Um, and you know, Twitter is another example where their APIs in version 1 have been very, very long lived. And they've been very specific um, for a long time without, without modification. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it depends on your, your mentality behind your APIs. Um, I think it's interesting when you compare um, those sort of thoughts with how uh, protocol buffers works, for example, but you can you know, add or remove fields and, and it's still compatible in terms of how the API design works. Uh, but of course, you have to handle those um, differences somewhere. Uh, if you're not handling them at your validation layer, you're handling them at your application yeah. layer. Uh, so you've always got to consider, consider um, different options. So one question I have from my personal experience, which is as you may be able to tell, uh, a long time ago, I spent a lot of time working with XML schema back in the XML days. Um, I don't know if you have you have you worked with XML schema, just out of, just out of curiosity. Um, I have a, a little bit, but again, not for a very long time right. now. And and one of the things was that XML schema is a very expressive language, so you can spend almost as much time as you want to refining the schema. I'm just wondering, in your experience, when you see JSON schema being used, is that something where you see that it takes a lot of, or like people put a lot of effort into it, or is it something where you would say it's a language that, in most in most cases, it's relatively effective to define things, and then that's good enough, and most people keep it at this level without you know going into very complex projects. Um. I think, again, it's both, and it depends how um, important the schemas are to the project. Um, so a lot of people will generate their schemas um, from existing data or from classes, yeah. um, and they, they'll mm -hmm. generate those, and they go, yeah, that's probably good enough. Um, they won't have the complex validation rules, which they'll then need to add to their application layer. Um, but, you know, it's, it's good enough, and it does the job. It does what they want it to do. Um, if you're creating a, uh, a schema registry and you're having lots of schemas that you want to, uh, you know, allow to be evolved communally over time, um, you care a lot more about uh, exactly what's in those schemas, mm -hmm. and you care a lot more about the rules in, involved in um, evolving those schemas and how you release them and semantically version them. Um, so then you have a lot more uh, concern over the intricacies. Um, but it really depends, uh, yeah, what you're using them for. Some people use them yeah. just just as a as a proxy for you know class generation from their data, uh, or from other people's API definitions. And when it's good enough and it works, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. And I guess even in the old XML days, it was the same thing. A lot of people just generated schemas and said, oh, "Good enough." Good enough. So since we have the privilege of having you here, the JSON schema specification lead. I want to ask you just very briefly, like, what's what's the process looking like for the specification to evolve? I know that JSON schema has been around for quite a while. There has been various versions, right? There was a little bit of a of a um, drift between what what uh, Open API was doing and JSON schema, how it was evolving, and so just give us a little bit of an idea of how the specification space, so to speak, is evolving yeah. and how JSON schema fits in in there. Yeah, I think um, sort of back in the early days when the current team, um, myself and a few others, um, picked it up after draft four, um, which is quite a while ago now, um, we kind of we had some ideas of what we thought we should add, and um, 
based on you know a number of issues and outstanding um, ideas that people from the previous team had had. We had some ideas of what we should add to the specification, and we sort of did that um, up until we were like draft seven, um, and that's that's worked relatively well. And we've answered a lot of um, requirements um, from the community. But as we started to engage with the community more, um, we really started to see the different uses of JSON schema. Uh, for example, form generation, um, UI generation of other types um, used in um, uh, you know, validation at the database uh, layer even, or really high level validation for configuration files and autocomplete. So we, we slowly discovered that the community that uses JSON schema um, for things beyond validation is actually big and, and growing. And every implementation which does one of those things does it in a slightly different way for a specific version of JSON schema. And that just starts to cause people lots of headaches. Um, and, and recognizing that we wanted to um, create a way to make JSON schema extensible in a, in a standard way. Um, so we came up with this notion of, of vocabularies um, and dialects. Um, and it enabled people to extend JSON schema in a way that made it interoperable. Um, so that the future of JSON schema is, is looking um, like we, we want to support um, special interest groups to develop those extensions to JSON schema, such as form generation, code generation, um, and even database uh, creation and validation at that layer. Um, so you know, way off in the future of JSON schema, we want to enable JSON schema to, to be able to be used at any point in your application stack. Uh, you know, write your, your documentation, your gateway, um, all the way down in your application to the database layer. And I think that's mm -hmm. um, something we're, we're trying to move towards uh, to support these special interest groups. Uh, we've had a bit of movement so far, um, but it's, it's taking uh, quite a bit of effort. Uh, in terms of the specification itself, um, we're looking to put out a, a patch release um, rather soon, um, hopefully this month. And um, that just sort of tidies up some um, ambiguities in the last specification we put out. Um, and we already have a host of new changes uh, for the next sort of feature release, uh, which we later on this year. From the um, th thanks, that's a very good overview, and I'm, I'm I'm really curious to see you know how long term JSON schema will be doing. I'm, I'm guessing it will be around for a very long time. From the API point of view, I'm I'm just curious. Probably Open API did, did a lot to um, make JSON schema mm -hmm. successful or well known. Is, is there anything where async API added like a new angle to it, or is is it just Kind of the same thing, and from the JSON schema point of view, it really doesn't matter so much whether it's being used in Open API or Async API. Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Thank you. Um, I think in terms of Async API broadly, um, they've been really great in in supporting JSON schema um, as, as soon as they sort of got started themselves. Um, they're our biggest um, financial supporter uh, before I joined Postman. Um, they enabled me and and others to do work we wouldn't have otherwise been able to do. Um, I, I think um, I think the Ace and KPI team are able to spend uh, a lot of time developing tools and resources related to JSON schema, um, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure they've necessarily had um, any direct influence in terms of what we're doing with JSON schema at the moment. Um, we haven't seen any sort of direct requests. Uh, we've seen a lot of questions. Um, but one of their team is is um, putting in a lot, a lot of effort into the code generation part because that's really important for them. Um, so they're, they're putting in a lot of effort there into that code generation um, special interest group. And we're looking for more people to join that effort who currently use code generation libraries and have an interest in that and have an interest in that being standardized moving forward. Uh, you know, anyone who's is a, a long-term player in terms of what they need to develop and support. Um, who cares about code generation from JSON schema? This is something you need to be involved in. And that was a, that was a good point. So in the end, 
the Async API doesn't really have an influence on the language itself, let's say, but on the ecosystem very much because there's a lot of tooling that, that will be developed or supports JSON schema. So there's yeah. quite a bit of a connection. Um, thanks, Ben. It was, it was really interesting to talk a little bit about, you know, how this whole ecosystem of specification is playing together. I do know, I think that you are currently, you have open positions, right, in, in JSON schema. Is that true? Yes. Yes. So we have two so, open positions. Let us know what they are. Yeah, we have one uh, for a senior developer role, uh, which we'll mostly be working on. Uh, tooling for JSON Schema, both uh, published by JSON Schema itself, which will be new for us, um, and working on on supporting existing other open uh, existing open source tooling, uh, such as Linters uh, by Spectral, um, and we have a technical community manager slash uh, developer relations position, um, which will really be focused on engaging with the community and developing new initiatives. Um, the, the developer relations slash technical community manager role is definitely the one we're finding uh, harder to get applicants for. So if that's something that you're passionate about or feel you could be passionate about and have experience in that area, um, yeah, please do get in touch. Yes, do get in touch with Ben. <laughs> yeah, and yeah those... it's a cool space to work in, I guess, right? It's mm. something that really, it impacts so many, I mean, kind of, all developers nowadays, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it really you know, the, the most popular implementation of JSON Schema sees upwards of 60 million weekly downloads, um, which is just so many. Right? <laughs> 60 million weekly downloads weekly is, is unbelievable. Um, and just to clarify, these um, open positions are uh, working for Postman, so you get all the benefits of, of working uh, for Postman, uh, but you're working on open source uh, for JSON Schema. Yeah, and then there is a shout out to Postman for supporting these activities. I think it's really it's really good to see those things getting some support so that that as you say, right, like these very, very significant building blocks that everybody kind of relies on, that there there goes some effort into mm -hmm. improving those. Ben, thanks so much for joining. Thank I you. hope that that everybody got a little bit out of that in terms of understanding better where JSON schema is. And we'll, we'll have an upcoming video that dives a little bit deeper into how JSON schema really works. But for today, I think we, we were able, or you were able, Ben, to give us a good overview. Thanks for that. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, everybody, and see you next time. Bye-bye.